No, you gotta be kidding me. It's taking this long to draw the checkerboard? Are you serious? No, I can't wait this long. No, no, no! Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to talk about how to play original TRS-80 cassette games in a modern PC. Similar to the video I did about how to do how to play original Atari 8-bit games in a modern PC. Now, TRS-80 was a computer that came out originally in 1977. It was produced by the Radio Shack, uh, the same Radio Shack with all the stores, the electronics. Uh, TRS, in fact, stood for Tandy Radio Shack, which was the actual name of the company. Again, the TRS-80 Model 1 came out in 1977, and it was originally a cassette-based system, although disk drives soon followed. And they used to, Tandy Radio Shack used to distribute software in these cool binders with different things like productivity applications and things like that. This one happens to be the Level 1 Games Pack, which we'll, which we'll, we'll try out here. But you see it's like sort of a standard binder that says TRS-80 on it. It's a nice, uh, cool finish on both sides. It's a nice material, nice, well-constructed. Then they just slide in here, the Level 1 Games Pack, to show that that's, that's what they're selling in this one. Um, this actually came shrink-wrapped with this piece of paper here on the back that shows you what games are inside. And you can see there's a uh, Space Taxi, which I think is some kind of Lunar Lander type game. There's a Tic-Tac-Toe game, there's a Checkers game. Star Pilot appears to be some kind of uh, some kind of shooting game. And there's a drawing program and others. So look at some of these. But the way this, this came out here is... Uh, you got cassettes, and this one came with three cassettes. And there's manual pages that are in a three-ring binder. So a pretty nice package. And obviously there's spacing for eight cassettes. But this package only has three. They all say on them, if you look, if you can look closely, uh, they all say on them copyright Tandy Corp 1978. That's what this package is from. So this is really from the you know the year after the the model was released in 1977. They put out this game pack. And nice thing about this is uh, it gives you instructions for each game, how to load them, what you're actually doing in the game. And then if you want, there's actually full program listings of every single game in BASIC. Uh, so if you want to learn from, from what's in here, you can actually learn how they programmed it, how they wrote it, and go from there. Um, obviously, that's not for everybody, but, uh, <laughs> but some people might want to do that. So we're going to check out some of the games in this game pack. We won't, tr won't try all of them, but we're going to do what we did before with the Atari games. So I take out, let's say, tape here. This one is Tic-Tac-Toe. The both are two sides. There's Space Taxi on the front, and then there's Tic-Tac-Toe on the back. And I have my cassette deck here, and it's basically be the same thing as before. We put the tape in and load it in, and we have this dubbing cable that connects to the output of the tape. And the, end of, the other end of that is going to go into the line in on my laptop with this adapter that I have to, for the headset that I showed in the other video. And that's how we're going to do it. Now, one TRS-80 Model 1 emulator for Windows, which is pretty easy to use, which I've used before, is called TRS-32. Unfortunately, that emulator requires admin rights to install under Windows for some reason. And... That's a little bit of a restriction, which I didn't want to have to deal with for the purpose of this video. I actually emailed the author asking if he could provide a zip file so I didn't have to use the installer, because I believe the installer is the only thing that actually requires admin rights. But unfortunately, he didn't respond to me. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use an emulator called TRS-81, which is an older emulator written in DOS. And therefore, to run it under a modern Windows system, you need to run it in DOSBox, which is essentially an emulator inside an emulator, but it works fine. The only annoyance is that that emulator actually is pretty cool. It gives you the ability to read directly off the TRS-80 cassette tape as if you're playing with a live TRS-80 connected to a live tape deck. Unfortunately, to do that, you have to hit Shift F11. <laughs> That's the key combination to do that within the emulator. And for some reason, DOSBox doesn't seem to pass that key combination through properly, and it doesn't do anything. So... I've had to resort to basically the same thing I did in the Atari 8-bit cassette emulator video where I just read the cassette tapes first into Audacity and then used those in the emulator. So 
Here's here's what the what the, the what a TRS-80 program seems to look like in Audacity. It's a little bit different from an Atari program. You can see there's a, a big header here at the beginning, and then there is a uh, sort of a long trail of actual data. A couple things to note, which uh, which sort of trip trip me up in the beginning. Number one is by default, Audacity records in this format of 32-bit float. Um, if you don't change that, I, 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 it wasn't working for me. I had to change it to 16-bit PCM, and then it worked fine. I'm not really sure why that is, but that's what I encountered. The other thing is, this is something which uh, people had to deal with really in the TRS-80 days also, in the, in the 70s, is the sound output on the actual cassette player needs to be at the right level. If it's too quiet, you won't get the data come through properly, and if it's too loud, the data can get cut off. If you look at this uh, this screenshot here, you can see that the waveform sort of goes between one and, and negative one with zero in the middle, and it's just barely not cut off at the top here. If I would have made the volume any louder, then the top of this data would have gotten truncated, and it may not have worked. And in fact, it wasn't working in the beginning until I figured out what the right volume levels were. So that's a, a little bit of an annoyance, but it's nothing new. It's something which you would have had to deal with in the, in the 70s as well. Once you figure it out, though, that it's pretty easy to do. Now let me play this uh, TRS-80 uh, tape so you can sort of see what it sounds like as opposed to an Atari tape. And what you think, what's interesting you'll see is that the, the, the look of the waveform is actually quite different than the Atari waveform. So here we have first the, the little bit of the header. And then here's the data, and if you zoom in, you can see that the, the, the way the data looks in the TRS-80 cassettes is a little bit different than the way the data looks in the Atari cassettes. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll pause it, actually, after I zoom in a little bit more so you can see it a little bit better. Is that each, it looks like to me, each one is this sort of interesting uh, shaped waveform. And I'm assuming the zeros are what's in between because every one of these is identical. So if you remember the Atari 8-bit, I think it was like sort of the the, uh, the zeros and ones were determined by the height of the waveform. Here it looks like the zeros are in between. The zeros are basically the nothing, the, the, the empty space, and the ones are each time it gives us a little pattern. At least that's, um, what, that's what I'm assuming here, I'm not 100% sure, but that's what it looks like. Now, because the TRS-80 emulator we're going to use loads cassettes in real time, um, even though it'll take wave files, I didn't want to try to do that because if the volume was off a little bit on the on the wave file, it, it would load for for five minutes and then finally give me an error, and I was getting a little bit tired of that. So I started to use this program here called Wave Two Cast, so I guess Wave Two Cassette, which will take the wave files and convert them into cassette files that, that the emulators will also recognize, and it'll do that pretty instantaneously. So to do that here, you just click open, you can open up a WAV file, and then right away it'll basically convert it and it'll show you all the actual code and basic that this converts into. And you can scroll down and see that it's all there, checksum, 21H OK, all OK, and you're good to go. And I didn't always get this, when the volume was off I was getting other results. So this is a pretty good check just to make sure that your WAV file is OK before we actually import it into the emulator. So here's the TRS-81 emulator running under DOSBox. When you hit F11, it brings up this virtual cassette recorder with a picture of a real TRS-80 cassette recorder. By hitting Enter, you can type in a file name of a cassette file, and then it'll show up after you hit Enter on the, the cassette as if you loaded that cassette into the player. You can hit uh, Home and, and, and End to see how long the tape is. See, it's 3397 in the counter. Then if I go back to Home, I'm rewinding the tape back to the beginning. I'm pressing P, I press play on the, on the virtual cassette. And then by hitting escape, I go back into the emulator. And now by typing the C load command, I can actually load the cassette into the emulator. Now you'll see a couple things here. There's a counter at the bottom that's going up. And if you saw before, it's the counter has to go to 3000 and something before it's going to finish. So this is going to take quite a while. And right next to it, it proudly boasts that the emulator is running at 1.77 megahertz, which is the speed of original TRS-80. So this is going to take quite a while, um, and again, that's why I tested it first in that Wave 2 cassette program, but I'm not going to bore you with this. Let me fast forward to the end.
And here it's finally finished loading. So now you can hit list if you want to see the program listing or just type run to actually run the program. So let's jump to the actual games on this thing finally and see what they look like. So here we have the tic-tac-toe program. I've just hit list to show the listing. Now I hit run to actually run the program. And we get Radio Shack's random tic-tac-toe. Oh boy, this is exciting, isn't it? Well, it takes some time to load. Yeah, I'm pressing enter because I'm not sure what's going on. If, I'm, if it's just waiting for an input or just frozen or what. Uh, finally, enter first name. <laughs> I was busy hitting enter, so I missed it. And now it's randomizing. All right, so now at least it's telling me that it's thinking. So let's let it randomize a little bit. Let's see how long this takes here. Da 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 da. Okay. Okay. Come on. Come on, randomize. Well, what this emulator definitely gives you is a good feel of what it was like to play a game in 1978. Okay, now it's finally drawing the tic tac toe board very slowly. Okay. Let's go. Come on, I want to play tic-tac-toe. Now this is actually a weird variant of tic-tac-toe where after every move, the all the, the pieces advance a square on the board depending on the number on the board. So if it's on a four, it'll move to a five on the next turn. It asked me where I wanted to put the X. I said one. So now it's redrawing the whole entire board again. What, are you kidding me? Now, I can suffer through drawing the board the first time, but if you have to draw the board every single time, Someone is going to make a move. That is a little bit crazy. Okay. Okay. So where's my X? Hello, X? Oh, gosh. And there finally appears the X. It's on a 2 because it moved from the 1 to the 2. And now he's thinking. And there's his O. I guess for whatever reason, it only switches the pieces around after you move. And now I'm moving again. Select a square. I'm trying to figure out what's the right place to put it. But basically, this game, I mean, Tic-Tac-Toe by itself is a pretty basic game. They tried to make a little variation where the pieces move around. But if you have to, if you have to wait such a long time after every single move for the board to redraw, I mean, honestly, I'd rather shoot myself than have to play this game. So <laughs> with that in mind, let's move on to the next one. Hopefully that one's a little bit better. Now here we have the next game, Checkers. So I'm going to run that game. As you see here, it's drawing the board. Okay. Um, all right, so this takes a little bit of time, but it's going really, pretty fast, drawing the board here. So they get to 64, I'm assuming, and then the board will actually be done. So let's wait. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's drawing every single white square now. And I, I think this is actually going a little bit faster in the video than it did in the actual emulator. I think when I converted the video over, it sped it up somehow. Because it seemed actually even slower than this, if that's possible, when I did it in the actual emulator. So imagine you're playing this game in 1978. Let's, let's get my checkers game going. And I guess you got to go get for go grab a cup of coffee or something or something to eat before you actually start the game because it takes such a long time before the game is ready to go. Now, when I was watching this, my, my main thought the whole time was, is this going to be like tic-tac-toe where every time you make a move it has to redraw the whole board? Because if it is, there's no way in hell that I'm going to wait for this to, to, to go every time I make a move. If it's one time, maybe it's tolerable, but definitely not to every single move. So let me spare you guys a little bit and fast forward this and see where it ends up. So believe it or not, I just skipped about three minutes of video. That's how long it took to draw this whole board. But it's almost done, so let's see what happens now. Okay, let's go. Oh my gosh. All right, now we gotta draw the pieces. And, I, and I'm telling you, this is definitely going faster on the video than it did when I actually did it in real time on the emulator. <laughs> For whatever reason, it got sped up a little bit. There's no way the pieces were drawing this fast on the actual emulator. I'm telling you, it was like probably another several minutes before that was done. Let me fast forward this again. Okay, so now it's finally done. Want to go first? Sure, why not? When you type, you see it corrupts the screen. So now it erased part of the screen. So now what's going to happen here? 
Okay. Yes, we're waiting. Uh, so now it's redrawing the part of the screen that it corrupted, which is nice, but <laughs> it would be much nicer if there was another place on the screen that it could have asked you that question where it wouldn't have corrupted the screen, but I guess that's impossible because this thing takes up basically the entire screen of the TRS-80. Now it's redrawing the pieces. Presumably after that it'll finally let me take my move, okay, from 41 to 34. Now, first thing it has to do is fix the part of the screen that it got that, that, that it corrupted again by letting me put my input in. So that's doing that now. And then it'll finally, hopefully, move my piece. There's erasing it from 41 and putting it into 34. Now, the computer now takes its move, but it doesn't tell you that it's thinking. It doesn't give you any indication of what's going on. It just goes ahead and moves. So basically you're waiting and waiting and waiting and you don't know what's going on. You might as well leave and get a cup of coffee again. And by the time you come back, all of a sudden it's moved and then you have to figure out where it moved to. So I've just fast forwarded almost a full minute of video and the computer is finally taking its turn. Finally. And now it's asking me for my turn again. And basically like, I mean the bottom line here is you have to be really, really bored <laughs> if you want to play this game, even in 1978. I mean, you must have no friends to play real checkers with. You really want to play against the computer, fine, I get it, but this is just too slow. It's too intolerable. If you're going to, like, sit through this, you must be some kind of sadist or masochist or something, and no, I'm just not playing this anymore. Let's, let's see what else we got to do. So here we have the next game called Star Pilot. Hopefully this will be better than the other one. In this simulation, you're to destroy a fleet of alien spaceships. So the ship is in the center of the target, Fire by pressing the clear key, which I had to figure out is F4 in the emulator. The number of rockets the alien ships will depend on your experience. The aliens become more evasive as the simulation progresses. How many years have you been a fire pilot? I wrote zero. How many ships can you destroy? I said one, because I have no idea how to play. Then it tells me, you destroy seven alien ships, so thank you so much. I said I can only destroy one, so they gave me seven. You have 38 rockets available. Good luck. And now we're basically waiting for this thing to load. Again, I'll skip ahead. So I just skipped ahead about another 25 seconds, and now we see the game. And wow, look at this. It's actually a pretty fast-paced game, because I guess the problem is with those other games is that the TRS-80's graphics mode was terrible. So every time it tried to actually draw anything that had to do with graphics, like even the little boxes of the checkers, it, it took forever. But because this game is being done solely with characters, it looks actually great. Uh, in comparison, it's moving like at a relatively decent speed. So it's sort of like a Star Wars game, it looks like. You're flying to, sort of down the Death Star Trench, and you're trying to shoot down TIE Fighters. You have to hit that, that F4 to shoot them when they're right in the middle. You actually can't steer. I missed a bunch of times because I was trying. I didn't realize you have to be right dead center. That's why I keep missing. But once it's right dead center like it is now, if you're able to shoot at the right time, boom! Got this big axe, destroyed it, and now I get to see this explosion as the TIE Fighter blows up, I guess, to a billion pieces. So this is pretty cool. I mean, listen, you can't steer. All you can do is shoot. But the graphics, at least, are somewhat, you know, <laughs> entertaining. It's moving in a decent clip. It has a nice Star Wars vibe, which obviously came out the year before in 1977. So this is fresh and new. And uh, it's a game. You can actually play, and you can, you can have some fun. There's 33 rockets left, six alien ships left, and here we go again. And back on the Death Star Trench. I mean, I'm not sure, it doesn't really make sense. I guess you're, it's sort of like Darth Vader simulator because you're sort of shooting down ships in the Death Star Trench instead of shooting for the exhaust port. But Darth Vader wouldn't be shooting the TIE Fighters either. So maybe you're like uh, the Red Wingman who are covering Luke Skywalker or something like that. I don't know. But the bottom line is, it's a game and it's a fun game. So it's pretty cool. Let's, let's, see what, 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 let's look at one more and see what we got there. Now this last game we're going to look at today is called Space Taxi. And I thought it was like a Lunar Lander type game, but it's not. It's, it's a little bit different. You're supposed to ferry some passengers in your space taxi, I guess, from one side of a mountain on some planet to the other side. And again, you see here the really slow graphics mode where it's drawing these things super duper slow. I guess if they would have been smart, it would have used characters like the previous game, Star Pilot, which moved at a pretty nice clip. But unfortunately, it's going ahead and drawing this thing really, really slow. So let's skip ahead again. All right, so here it's almost done. Skipped ahead another minute or so, save you guys some pain. All right, now it's asking you 
horizontal thrust. It wants you to put in a, an amount there. I was trying to figure out what the heck to do here. Horizontal speed zero, vertical speed zero, oxygen per second 70, fuel is 80. So you have to put a number for horizontal thrust. And first I couldn't figure out what to do here. I thought maybe you could actually control the thing in real time like a real arcade game, but I guess it's just asking you to put in some numbers. So I put horizontal thrust is 10, and I think I tried to put 100, but it put 10. And then vertical thrust is 50. And now you see the ship starts going and taking off. And I thought you could control this. It like looks like there's arrow keys, and if you move the arrows up and down or left and right, you can control the thrust. But either that's not the case, or I just couldn't figure out how to actually hit the right keys in the emulator to send this over. But either way, I'm just sort of watching this thing go, and it actually looks like <laughs> it's sort of doing a good job, and it might actually clear the mountain, and it's going at the right angle, just for the random numbers that I put in. Unfortunately, the problem is, if the thrust is continuous, then it's not going to clear the mountain ever. I mean, it's, it's going to clear the mountain, but it's not going to go to the other side. It's going to keep on going up and up and up. And that's basically what ends up happening here, <laughs> as you'll see in a second. So just skipping ahead a little bit more to save you some pain. It's at the top of the screen, and now it says, You've left the safety of the Redition Dome, and you've died of Redition Poisoning. So again, really great spell check there. Play again, yes, no. And you know what? I, I don't think I do want to play again, actually. That didn't look like too much fun. So of the four games that we played, Tic-Tac-Toe and Checkers, just way too slow, in my opinion, to be fun. This game here, Space Taxi, or the heck it was called, uh, you know, not nothing exciting. Star Pilot, even though it's very limited, all you do is shoot, it was it actually had a fun factor to it. I think that was pretty fun. But anyway, this is the these are the games that people were playing in the earliest times of microcomputers. People that had computers in the in the late 70s, these are the type of games they were playing. There was not much else. So I guess that's why you know Radio Shack was able to sell this package and people still bought it because there was really nothing else to do. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that and found it interesting. That's how to load old TRS-80 cassette games on a modern PC. If you did, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, etc. And enjoy playing old TRS-80 games.